Okay, so we have seen Falschemeger in pub dress. Yep. This have is now Falschemeger out of the pub. It is indeed. Going to war. Yes. Yep. Um, that's a ridiculous looking helmet, man. It is indeed, <laughs> yep. Okay, so we, we have Lewis again, John. Right, now this is... This is basically part two to that yep. original video. This yep. is now another layer of stuff Over on the top. top. Yep, so yes, take us through it. So you've seen in part one, he's still wearing the Flieger blues underneath. He's so everything he was wearing, he's still wearing. Everything he was wearing, he's still wearing. He's obviously got rid of the ski cap and he's put the, the tin hat on. Yes. Um, so this is the Falschmjäger helmet, uh, which is essentially the same for most para units at the time. It's a very deep helmet, a very small lip because they were worried about the German Helmets had the bigger lip. Yeah. Would come back and snap your neck or damage your your parachute lines, anything like that. Very distinctive part of the Falschmjäger uniform. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, a lot of the guys didn't wear their caps. They preferred to wear this because allies would know these guys were. And the colorization, if I can just move your head, yes, we indeed, see yep. here the the green and the tan. Yeah. Uh, that that that's pretty much what you would see. So if we yep. go to do Falschmjäger helmets. It's worth you know painting them that light color and then putting the the green blotches and yep. stuff on yes. it. Yeah. And the, yep. the best thing is that all the, the soldiers painted the helmets themselves. So uh -huh. if they had paint available, they painted it themselves. So you would find a huge variety of camouflage schemes and patterns and colors. Right. So they didn't come painted. No. Nope. They came in their their gray. Yep. They Regular just turned up as gray. Yeah. yeah. They feel gray, and then they painted the yeah. the camouflage. A lot of guys on. actually, what they would have done is uh, to camouflage it further. Um, they would have put. I suppose like a paste of paint and sawdust over yeah, the outside they would have of mixed, it. Mixed a bit of paint and sawdust and put a texture onto it yep. as well. So they made magic mix even yeah. back then. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, if we can have a look inside, we can yep. see the the kind of the blue gray yep. um, of the actual original helmet in there as well. Um, would there be any harm in maybe having some helmet helmets still that color? Would no there, problem. No? Yeah. yeah. No. Because they also some of them had camouflage cloth covers they would have put on them as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to keep your helmet good for whatever reason, you would have had a camouflage cover on it. Okay, moving down. Moving um, down. I, I can't get past this. What is this groovy <laughs> oh, little, of course, yeah. little tie? Go on, Lewis. You well, can talk about it. this, um, a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon whenever this came out. Um, there's only one recorded photograph ever of a Falschmjäger wearing this. Yes. But rumours started that this was an unofficial unit insignia. Uh -huh. It wasn't. It was only one person more than Yes. And someone jumped the bandwagon and thought, oh, well, we'll wear these. Um, what they wore originally, or what they would wear uh, whenever they were out um, with a necktie, was pieces of parachute silk that they had got in Normandy from, from Allied parachutes. Yes. Uh, you see a lot of them with that camouflage sort of yellowy white colour. Um, yes, like that, this. That's pretty much that. It there. Yeah. yeah. Um, they would have worn that instead, but. Um, no, it's it's fashionable. You know, the the Falschmjäger and the Go has to be has to be fashionable. So, look, look, hang on here, right? Are you telling me that there's a picture out there where a young Falschmjäger has decided, you know, this uniform's okay, but I could make it fabulous. Well, yeah. Uh, so yeah. he's you know, he's he's grabbed the he's grabbed something that is you know it's fabulous polka dot. You know, yeah. it, it makes him you know he goes to war in style. He's <laughs> he's ready to give it this. They, yep. People think that it may have been a gift from family members or something like that. Yeah. But it became an unofficial insignia for the um, 6th Regiment uh -huh. and people just ran with it. Well, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think I think if we ever do Falschmjäger, blue, Polka plus a little white star. dots oh, on over there yes. and just have the fabulous guys. Right, okay, oh, yeah. right, down to the, the so, okay. is this a smock band he's this wearing? or is actually called a Zeltband he's wearing. A Zeltband. A Zeltband is basically a, a roll you would see on the back of the German equipment on their belt. Mm -hmm. This was two things this worked in two ways this is either the um the poncho as he's yep. being as it's being worn at the moment if you put four of them together you can make a two-man tent uh -huh. because they came with poles and everything you yep. could erect a small tent with these as well no way mm -hmm. yeah every so. man in the squad would have carried a section of this rolled up on his on his backpack or yes. on his um his belt there, there is a problem there though right mm -hmm. it if takes you, four if to you make had a two of them four to make a yeah. ten yeah. yeah did you carry two or did you only carry one carry the one, one. <laughs> yeah yeah okay somebody had a kind of half a good idea there yeah. so okay right so he would have either worn the zelt band or he would have worn the the Falschmjäger smock which yeah. is a bit like the British smock, only it's very baggy and it's a bit longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it would have come in this pattern, which is splinter pattern, or in a different one. Now, let's get a closer look at the pattern, okay? Because this is not blotchy. No, this no. is very it angular. Is it is indeed. So, uh, it's an angular pattern with the, the green... Well, it's kind of, of like a, a very gray. light or field grey, sort of um, um, a more kind of rich green and yeah. a brown. Mm -hmm. 
and again with the little kind of little tiger stripes. Yep, rain. Uh, those are rain stripes. So whenever it rains, one of the one of the thinking behind the actual camouflage was whenever it rained, it got better at hiding itself because mm. the rain would break up the outline and would blend in with the uh, with the rain as it came out. Right. Yep. <clears throat> what so, is this component here then? Yep. This is a bandolier for his um, K98 rifle. Uh huh. Uh, now. Lewis is also wearing MP40 magazine pouches yep. for the, the machine pistol And sticks. they would have been blue like this, yes? Yeah, yes. that's Falsham Jaeger blue, that's um, your Luftwaffe equipment. Mm -hmm. So your Luftwaffe had brown leather and generally blue. Because Falsham Jaeger weren't army, they, they were, were part of the Luftwaffe. Yeah, they were part of the Luftwaffe, yeah. yep. Uh, so brown and the buttons on it are, are straight up yep. silver, so... So now the buttons on this are actually little grey, yeah. little yep. grey dots. So, and they're also quite shiny as well. So a little bit of grey mixed with a gloss varnish, yep. just little dots on that, yep. and you get another nice little mm -hmm. additional touch. Everybody's wondering why I'm getting this button, button fetish. fetish. Yes, yes that's but a weird. I'm not about the counting the buttons, but I do think that buttons might be an easy thing to add to miniatures because just a yep. little dot of paint. So I'm I'm coming yep. around to this thing where I think buttons could be a nice little addition that could be quick to do yes, to miniatures, indeed, yeah. so. So Lewis would have been wearing this two ammunition rig for a couple yep. of reasons. When these guys were used in combat, they would have yeah. carried any amount of ammunition they could for every weapon they had in the unit. Yeah. So the only thing that would be missing off this rig at the minute would be a belt of MG42 ammunition for the yep. squad machine gun. Because mm -hmm. everybody would have carried ammunition for that. So obviously in this situation he's carrying his personal weapons ammunition and weapon ammunition for the other K98s. And, and where did the ammunition it. go into this? So well, you unbutton it. Yep. Uh -huh. you, had a band, you had a clip of five, a stripper clip of five. In there. And it yep. would have taken two of those. Oh on right, side. so one on each side, yep. so yep. like this. It's so. fairly hefty when you have all your ammunition yep. in there yeah. because it is quite a heavy weight. They would have also carried anti-tank weaponry like uh, the Panzer, Panzer Faust. Faust on their... If they could have tucked it in behind, you can see the Y-strap at the back. They uh -huh. tucked it in they there. Slid it in uh, through the... Slid in so, like this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so these guys were well and truly tooled up for a fight whenever mm -hmm. they went into combat. Well, let's spin you around again. Okay, yep. so we see the brown... Uh, of the the strapping, but also you can see two tone brown yep. on this and little bits of white stitching. Um, coming down, what is this, John? That is part of the the guy, the soldier's personal equipment. This is a bread bag. Yeah. So this is he would have kept rations in here. He'd have kept any food he could uh, find. Other personal kit as well, shaving, washing, any of that if they had time for mm -hmm. it. He then and then has finally his water is, bottle. His water bottle, Again, which is in kind of, of blue. yeah, that yep. kind of it's got that kind of. Cottony yep. kind of yes. look as yep. well. The same sort of material that the Flieger Blues is made from. Yep. Yeah, and then the, the little, little grey lid yes. yep. on the on the top with a grey cup. So that's a very basic combat layout. Obviously, you need his his uh, weapon and a few other bits yep. and pieces. Yeah, um, a lot of the times they wore that they they ninety five percent of the pictures you'd see of them was the smock rather yep. than the actual Zeltban. Yeah. Um, the Zeltban would have just been used as tentage, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. but this, the smocks were very popular. Or if it, if it was particularly wet, they would have had a waterproofing agent on the Zeltban and they would have worn that in the rain as yep. well as the rain. Yeah, it wouldn't have been much of a tent if it wasn't waterproof. Yeah, exactly. so. Oh, yeah. Of course. Okay, guys, there you go. There's uh, yet another uh, uniform overview. Stay tuned for the rest of the weekend because we're going to have at least one, maybe two more, uh, where we get to, to show you off more stuff. Okay, we'll be back soon.